of 70. Let's start with Jonathan in the city. Hey, Jonathan, thanks for calling. What's going on? Hey, you know, just in, enjoying this beautiful sunny weather, although it's breezy, and listening in to you guys. Um, you know, it only kind of makes sense to me because I, I really want the Warriors to get a center, a young center, right, to, to, to be able to really compete because that's what they're lacking. And it showed in the last season that they need a little bit of size. But yeah, Paul George kind of makes sense, but it doesesn't make sense to me if they have to give up Kaminga, for James Key, TJD. I mean, I'm not saying those guys, those three guys, are going to be, you know, superstars in the future. But at the very least, they're starters and they're rotational pieces, and and that even those guys are hard to find in the NBA, right? So, yeah, I don't want to wager the future just for the sake of going for it for the last time, because like you know. And the last season, last season's uh, playoff uh, showed us that, you know, patchwork, super teams that are top-heavy, what happened to them in the playoffs, man? They got bounced in the first round. Well, Jonathan, I'm with you, and, and I am willing to really be wrong on this. I'm really willing to be wrong. I would be shocked if the Warriors had to give up Jonathan Kaminga in a deal for Paul George. I just don't. That, that's just my read on this. I do not see how the Clippers are in position to demand Jonathan Kaminga in this case. Again, the Clippers and Paul are playing poker. Um, Paul would like to be somewhere. We don't even know where that is, if it's here. And if the Clippers get to the point where they go, okay, we actually think Paul might opt out. He might be a free agent. We're going to get nothing. So that would be the scenario where they pull the trigger on a deal they would believe they're about to get nothing. And if you're about to get nothing, you don't then pick up the phone and get the crown jewel from the other team. Imagine if you are scalping in the parking lot. You got four tickets down low. I've been there. And you're in the parking lot. And you got your little sign and you got your tickets. And people are rolling by you. Do you need tickets? And everybody's like, nope, nope, nope. And then, all of a sudden, well, the game's about to start. The game's about to start, and you realize, man, I'm, I'm going to eat these tickets. What happens? Price goes down. Way you're down. The, you're not in a position to demand anything at this point. So, again, very willing to be wrong, and I am not in on these negotiations. But I would be shocked if this were to happen, to see the Clippers be in position to demand any of the Warriors' top assets. You I just the don't word see it. demand, and it's not about demanding. It's about a negotiation. And I do think that there are more suitors that are out there. And I don't think that Paul George is Golden State or bust. If you don't trade me to Golden State, then I don't want to play anywhere else because ultimately they could call that bluff. And, yeah, they can get nothing back, but then Paul George doesn't get what he wants either because he can't go there as a free agent and get the max. So... There's a certain amount of negotiating that's going to go on on both sides, sure. on all sides. And I'm sure Paul George has a list of teams that probably includes Golden State. And there are some teams that he doesn't want to get traded to. But it has to come down to be something that's negotiated by his agent, the Clippers, and every other team. And so I don't think that, you know, the word demand to me is not appropriate because no one's going to be able to demand anything. Paul George can demand what he wants to demand, and the Clippers can say no. And the Clippers can demand what they want, and Paul George can say no. So it's not about demand on any side. It's about a negotiation, what works for everybody. I'm sure Paul George would want the Clippers to get something back for him. And the Clippers want to get something back mm. for him. You think he cares about that? I think so. I don't. We've seen it from Kevin Durant. Was, are, you, are you trying to say that players don't care about doing uh, a solid to their I, team? We've I seen it a number of different times. We've seen it a number of different times. We've seen it more often where it's not the case. But I would argue, I don't know that I'd even describe that as Kevin Durant caring that the Warriors got something. Oh, he back. absolutely cared. He did him a solid. I don't think he really gave a rip. Like I don't well, he think did, well, he clearly gave a rip because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do it, but there was no reason to not do it. In other words, he got what he wanted, and and right. so therefore this. But is he could have gotten what he wanted without having it be a sign and trade. He could have. So that's sort of like, look, you're going to get the same thing either way. Would you do us a solid? He said yes. I don't put put it this way. It's not on Paul's priority list. 
if it's all I'm sure the, priority one is if get it's paid. all the same to him, would right. he do it? Sure. Does Paul really like care? Does he give a rip what the oh, Clippers end up? I don't know what up? Paul cares about. I don't. I don't. I don't know any player that really, really is like. Tell you what, I need to leave. I want a different team. I want a better salary. But high on my priority list is what they get. The place that I'm leaving, what they get in return. I, I, it could I mean, be number two on the priority list. But number one on the priority list is getting paid. But especially if you're joining a team, you don't want that team to devalue itself on the way in. Paul would actually be more incentivized for the Warriors to keep their good assets because he wants them to be good right. when he arrives. But th right? that so, oftentimes isn't you like know, the way it works. Kevin Durant did the Warriors a solid because somebody came to the Warriors who wasn't on the team he was about to join. So if this is a three-team deal, something like that, that makes sense. And that's sense. probably the way that this yeah, would be but Paul, if Paul, this happened. Paul is not going to look to the Warriors and be like, give up your good players so I can come join you. That makes things worse of for him. Of course not, and it won't be a straight line, you know, one for one, and maybe Kaminga's on the move to another team as a part of a three-team trade. I, I just don't see the Warriors able to land a player of that caliber without parting with their number one asset. And you can talk about their picks and, you know, Raymond Ritter put in this 300-page booklet. Thank you, Raymond. And he's awesome. But you could look to uh, page six, and it talks about their... <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Page That's seven. A, uh, okay, class, turn their, your textbooks to page their seven. Their draft selections. All right. In 2025, they own their first-round pick. Yes. And they may receive a second-round pick from, from Charlotte. Good to know. 2026, they have their first-round pick. Also so exciting. You do have some picks in the future that, you know, you're looking forward to. You don't have a first-round pick today. The draft is getting underway in about two hours, and unless that changes, they won't have a pick today. So, you know, the Warriors and their draft picks, that's not the asset. The asset is Jonathan Kaminga. Yeah. So if you want to be involved in a three-team trade for one of the top 15 players in the league, I find it hard for any team to be involved without Kaminga being a part of yeah, it. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, I just, you I don't, to, we, we disagree. I, we do, we do. I don't, I don't see how the Clippers are in that position. This is, this well, is it might a, be a three-team trade. This is a dump. This is a total dump. Yeah, I don't this see is it like, as a dump. Like, well, but again, this, that's what you do. But he's going to leave. He's going to leave. He's going to opt out. He's going to leave the Clippers. The, I, I just I don't see them being in a power position right now at all. Um, Larry Riley is going to join us in 18 minutes. Um, deep inside the, uh, the Warriors front office, a lot to do today, this week. Larry Riley is going to join us. Coming up, it's actually, after. Larry Harris is going to join us, and oh, that's, that's on Lucas. Oh my God! I looked down and saw. Why did you write Larry Riley? Thank because you. Let, no, made, that's my bad. My Larry Harris. No, I know it's written wrong, but I'm not uh, stay no. classy San Diego. I'm not just reading a teleprompter over here. But you just here. did. You just did, Burgundy. That's why it's my bad. I'm Ron Burgundy. Go find yourself, Larry Lucas Harris. Alexander. For crying out director loud, director of nothing. Anyway, Larry, am I yeah, right? Director of sports, Larry Harris. Direct your own stupid Ladies and legal gentlemen, pad. we have got uh, ourselves. Look yeah, exactly. No, no, no. I'm not putting blame in. Or else that's I, I should have thank you Tim I should have directed and adjusted yes. on the fly uh, Larry Harris uh, is going to join us yeah. uh, thank you <laughs> Larry Moe and Curly Larry right? <laughs> Larry Harris and uh, and this name I know uh, Brandon Pajemski is going to join us at four o'clock today are you sure it's not Bill <laughs> Pajemski it could be uh, Brandon <laughs> uh, let's see Le Brandon uh, Roy Brandon Crawford yeah um, he owns the Giants we tried to get him last week and uh, he was busy. Anyway, yes, Larry Harris and Brandon Pajemski both on the show today. 888-957-9570. Dante in Vegas is next up here on Willard and Dibs. Hi, Dante. What's cooking? Hey, gentlemen. How you guys doing? We're good. Um, so no to the Paul George thing. I would love for the Warriors to go after Zach Levine and Lonzo Ball. I think the, the, the Bulls are in the same position as the Clippers where they can't um, – they're trying to get off that contract, move to the younger movement. That would be a nice pickup for uh, for the Golden State, and he's younger. I would rather have Zach Levine me personally. Can I? Yeah. Can I be real with you right now? Because boy, like I, I like respect it. Totally disagree with it. Why would that be a nice pickup for the Warriors? What do you see in those two players? Well. Um, Golden State has done very well with players coming to their team like Brandon Rush, uh, Sean Livingston. Lonzo Ball will be great. He's 6'6", six, six, uh, plays defense. He was shooting 41% before he got hurt. Um, great contributor to the team. Zach Levine picks up where Clay Thompson left off. He can score. Why and? not? 
Yeah, and they're he, both I, younger I, players. I love, I love that your call cut out for a second right when you said he can score <laughs> because that's literally all he can do. Dante, I appreciate it. That's just my take. Zach Levine is a is is a one dimensional player in my opinion. He can score the rock, can't do anything else. Very very porous on defense. And I love what I love about your call is your optimism I, with regard to Lonzo Ball. I, I when you talk about an injury concern, good lord, we have we have put that label on Paul George. We've put it on Clay Thompson. We've put it on Kevin Durant. There is no bigger injury concern in the NBA today than uh, than Lonzo Ball. I I have moved on from thinking that he's even really got an NBA career right. going forward. I could be wrong. Um, maybe he's a great reclamation project. You know what that would be? It'd be reclamation sensation. It Mark. really would, and uh, and that would be exciting. But um, yeah, the bull, the Bulls right now with Alex Caruso now gone do not excite me as a trade partner for the Golden State Warriors. Ball hasn't played in two years. Yeah, and, and I I feel bad for him because his career looked to be promising. And what he can do in the association, I think, is something that has great value to yes, many teams. I but agree. the injury factor has been so bad that he's no longer able to even give it a go. He played on three teams in five years. He missed two seasons. And Zach Levine, also we need to uh, note, is coming off a foot injury. He had foot surgery in yeah. February. He's going to be out until August, so we don't even know how healthy he's going to be. Levine, healthy or not, I don't know what it is. Like, I just, I can't stand the idea. You know what he is? He's uh, Fruit Loops. He's Tricks. Yeah. He's yeah, Cocoa yeah. Puffs. He's good. He's empty calories. Wow. Really good. You can have a bowl, you can have two bowls, and you're still hungry. That whole area of the cereal aisle is just bright colors trying to get the kids and to stop it. the yeah, cart. Yeah, no, yeah. I get it. I yeah. did it too. Yeah. I won't even stop there now unless the kids are with me and they make me stop. I'm not going to that area of the cereal aisle. I'll see you in the aisle. Yeah, thank but you. not that portion of the 